Hello, hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, uh, how are you, Rene? Hi, hi, Maria, hi, Carlos, hi, Ruby. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for patiently waiting for us. There seems to be some technical issues. It happens to the best of technological families. So um, let's go right ahead and start with this networking session. First of all, I wanna thank all of you for joining us and our panelists for accepting our invitation to hold a collective discussion about diversity and the power and imperative of serving Hispanic communities. But before we begin the session, I just wanted to go through some housekeeping, some very necessary housekeeping items. First, please leave your camera on during the session. We want to see you. Second, we'd love to hear from everyone. And our panelists have made a point of asking us to encourage you to jump in the conversation at any time. They were really adamant about it. So we want to honor, honor that request. Also, please feel free to share your thoughts and dropping questions into the chat box. After the initial remarks from our panelists, we will go ahead and open the floor for a debate slash discussion, and we want you to participate. Now, if you have any technical issues, difficulties like we just had recently, please email emsupport at advancednetlabs.org or click on the support bubble at the bottom right side of your screen. Now, for purposes of time, our speaker bios are available at inclusive.org or by going to the front page of the conference site. Of course, we'll be using hashtag CDCUCon 2021 to track and continue discussions during these two days. If you hear something from our panelists that blow your blows your mind, and I'm sure that you will, please feel free to share that using the, CDC, the hashtag CDCUCon 2021. Also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, using at inclusive CDCUs and on LinkedIn at inclusive. Now, of course, once we're done, post-conference videos of all sessions, including this one, will be up by October 11 on Inclusive's YouTube channel and Inclusive CU network. Having said that, I wanna take a quick moment to talk a bit about Juntos Avanzamos. I know that many of you have heard during the conference about Juntos Avanzamos, and I see that many of you are ready from Juntos Avanzamos designated credit union, so it's happy for me. To, to see all of you, um, uh -huh, no glass of wine, I wish I did. Um, and of course, um, everyone, please, if you can put on your cameras, we'll love to see your faces. Um, now, Juntos Avanzamos is a financial inclusion framework that provides a roadmap for credit unions that are interested in meeting the needs of Hispanic and immigrant communities. By working with us through the Juntos Avanzamos designation process, Credit unions start a journey that will help them increase the diversity of their membership, staff, and volunteers while fully embracing and applying the DEI principles. It would also help them to offer comprehensive services to their Hispanic communities and ultimately grow. Now, Juntos Avanzamos was originally founded by the Cornerstone Credit Union League, and it was taken national by Inclusive in 2016. And I am proud to say that as of today, the Juntos Avanzamos Network has 116 credit unions in, in serving 8.5 million members in 27 states, Washington, DC, and Puerto Rico. Now the Juntos Avanzamos designation is recognized by Hispanic consumers and communities as a symbol of trust, a way for people to feel assured that, that participating credit unions are welcoming and that they will have access to a full array of products and services by people that speak their language, our language, nuestro idioma, uh, and that they will have access to a full range of products and services. And of course, Juntos is also a platform to connect to nonprofit organizations that are helping Hispanic communities. That includes the Mexican Consulate Network. It also includes Catholic Charities and others. And having said that, if you have any questions about Juntos Avanzamos and you're interested in the Juntos Avanzamos designation, please feel free to contact me, I will put my email in the chat as soon as we start this conversation. Now it's on to the main show. It is my privilege to present our panelists, Ruby Alvarez, AVP of Community Development at GECU. Hola, Ruby. Hola, buenas tardes. Saludos, gracias por acompañarnos. Carlos Calderón, CEO of 
Organization of American States, FCU, better known as OAS, FCU. Hola, Carlos. Buenas tardes, ¿cómo está, René? Saludos. Gracias por acá. Gracias por acompañarnos. And finally, our very good friend, Maria Martinez, CEO at Border FCU and President of the Board of the National Association of Latino Credit Union Professionals, better known to all of us as NALCAP. Hola, Maria. Hola, bienvenidos a todos. Welcome. Thanks for being, thanks for being here for joining us. And I don't have any wine. I do have a glass, but it doesn't have any liquor. Okay, just FYI. Don't judge me. <laughs> That's hard sure. to believe. <laughs> no, we, we actually sent those. I don't know what happened. Probably they got lost in the mail. We'll, we'll put oh, in yeah. a complaint with management to make sure that you know next time we have you all served. Now, as many of you know, one of the criteria that we use to evaluate Juntos Alan Samos applications is Hispanic representation. We want to make sure that the credit unions that join Juntos Alan Samos represent the communities that they serve. We look at board composition, we look at bilingual capacity. We look to see if they have Hispanic advisory committees that are intentional about serving the Hispanic community. We look at representation in lower, middle, and upper management. Um, and so what we have seen across the board through the Juntos Network is that when credit unions start to reflect, when the staff starts to reflect the diversity of the communities they serve, credit unions grow and are successful. And this is the case of the credit unions, of the panelists from the credit unions that accompany us today. And so with that, Maria, you lead border Credit Union, Federal Credit Union in Rio, Texas, you're literally on the border. Um, could you talk a, a, to us a bit about your credit union, your experience hiring and empowering, and empowering diverse staff, and how it has helped your credit union grow? And thank you, Lene, and, and welcome everybody again. Well, just I'm going to give you a little bit of history on my credit union too, because our credit union started in 1954, and we started inside a, an Air Force base. So the people that came together to generate a co-op were part of the federal government. At that time, it was a group of mainly white males that got together and developed a credit union inside an Air Force base. They had a lot of vision to serve military employees and later on in the, uh, in the early 80s, they decided to expand out of the base and expand it into the community, which is in, in Del Rio, Texas. And as you know, Del Rio, uh, for those of you that don't know, Del Rio is about maybe 85 to 90% Hispanic. So the potential was there for, for them to serve the Hispanic community. They, they still had a lot of members that were you know, from the base but then it started expanding because they got a community charter. Uh, and then I came in and of course I started expanding into other border towns. Uh, we had originally, we had about three counties and we expanded into 13 counties, but the majority of those counties still have about 85 to 90% Hispanics. So for us serving the Hispanics, it's a must. And of course, when it's time for recruiting staff, um, it's not so much recruiting Hispanics, but it's also recruiting bilingual staff. As many of you know, many of our uh, kids of, our, of the younger generations tend to lose the Spanish speaking. And we're still serving a lot of Spanish speakers. So when we hire, we gotta make sure that we hire bilingual staff. So one of the things with the Juntos Avanzamos is not just hire a Hispanic or somebody that looks Hispanic like, like somebody else, but it's also make sure that they are speaking the language. I can tell you that many times we've hired people that speak mainly Spanish more than English, and they've been able to uh, conquer the English portion of it because about 85% of the time they speak Spanish. So I think when, when you're looking at your credit union, also look at your community, what kind of community are you serving? And also when you're trying to diversify within your staff, Look and, look and see at the talent. And it's not just so much, you know, whether they're, you know, f male, female, or any ethnicity, but who can they, how, who can be the best to serve your members? So look at your members first. And that's one of the questions that we ask on the Juntos Avanzamos application that says, 
are you serving Hispanics? And do you have bilingual staff? So just foot for thought, you know, keep those things in mind. Thank you, Rene. Gracias, Maria. And now Ruby, your credit union is in El Paso, Texas, um, also serving a substantial Hispanic population, just like Maria's. Talk to us a bit about your credit union and your experiencing and your experiences hiring diverse staff and how and if that has helped you grow. Um, thank you so much for having me as well. Good afternoon, everyone. We are GECU. We're in El Paso, Texas. So similar to Maria, we are a border city. Again, 83% um, Hispanic here in our community, largely speaking uh, members. And so when our members walk into our lobbies, they are met with individuals that can effectively communicate with them. That's something that GECU is very strong on. Um, so with that comes a lot of financial education. Our staff, like Maria said, a lot of times, you know, they think they speak Spanish, but a lot of the times when we have those conversations, we have to ensure that we coach them in both languages so that we are able to communicate with our members. And a lot of times we also make sure that our members understand that we're here for them and that we're gonna be patient with them. We also look at the different areas of our city and look at the different needs of our communities. Um, GECU is a strong supporter of the VITA program, which is our free tax preparation. And so that's another thing that we serve to our community and we, all of our volunteers that are certified um, also speak Spanish. And so that we are able to provide those services in English and in Spanish. This year, we helped our community with over 10,000 returns um, here in El Paso. So that's something that we strongly work with. And, um, you know, professional speaking, we have been able to develop young, young Hispanic professionals to compete in the job market as well. You know, they may have come to GECU already bilingual. However, the experience that they receive here, the opportunities that we provide them to grow and continue to learn within the organization, open them up for career advantages that go beyond the credit union. So that's something that we're also focusing on is developing young Hispanic leaders. Thank you so much, Ruby. Um, and now on to Carlos. Now, Carlos, you're the CEO of uh, quite an international credit union, um, OIS, FCU, a bit different, I guess, from the experience of Maria's and, and Ruby's credit union. Could you talk to us a bit more about OIS, FCU, your membership, which is fascinating, and of course, um, um, you know, your diverse hiring and how that has helped you grow? Right, thank you, Renee, and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having us here. Um, I'm going to always build on something Maria and Ruby have said, and it is that language is a key. So our, our membership, it's pretty, pretty international, meaning uh, the credit union was formed to serve employees of our international organization coming to Washington, D.C. back in the 60s. And since then, we have, we have added other groups, but for the most part, our international civil servants working either in the States or abroad. So they're expats, wherever they are. But there's some common commonalities between any of the uh, issues that the two other credit unions have highlighted, language, uh, being able to support them, uh, hand holding, holding their hands throughout the whole process, whether there are they may be very well versed in, in finances in their countries, but when, once they come here, they're lost. So, and that's a key. Um, so what we do is we have all of our documents in two languages, English and Spanish, all the way from um, the, the web page, of course, uh, anything else that we do, everything that we do, it's bilingual. Um, we hire people many times, as Maria mentioned, they may not be very fluent in Spanish or not fluent in English, uh, depending on the needs that we have, but we're willing to teach them and to obviously pay for the courses. So we have had people that we found that were the perfect match, but the language skills may not have been there yet. And we would take, to take them on and take them on and, and uh, send them to, to schools or pay for their, for their language skills. And, 
we've tried to do that. We keep our environment very open and international. We used to do quite a bit of potlucks and social hours and all of that. And people will be able to share not only their foods, but also some of their experiences and their national um, origins and, and diversity in that sense. So we are also very much into diversity, equity, and inclusion um, all the way for all the way from our staff, from staff members, supervisors, upper management, and volunteers. We make a point to have a very diverse group of volunteers as well, so the credit union members can see how uh, the credit union is very well represented, uh, not only at not only on the operational side, but also volunteers when they look at who is the president and the vice president and, and the chair and all of that. So, so all of that has worked very well for us. Uh, we are like to be in tandem with our members. Uh, we have people from pretty much every country uh, working for the credit union. And um, we manage four languages, but mainly English and Spanish for the most part. But Portuguese is also growing. We have people who speak Portuguese and believe it or not, some French. So uh, we do, we have staff members that will handle that. So if the letters come to me, sometimes I get letters in Portuguese, I make the point to respond in Portuguese. Not that I'm fluent there, but we have people who will be able to help us with it and all of that. So that's, uh, we like to be very conscious of that. Très bien, Carlos, merci beaucoup. Uh, and so um, I see that Enrique has a reaction. Go ahead, jump in. Obrigado. Uh, and yes, thank you for uh, René and Pablo for setting this up and getting everyone to rally talk about uh, Juntos Avanzamos. So question is, is twofold for the panelists. One is on um, specifically, of course, on language, on signage that's available at your branches. Um, we're exploring, uh, by the way, Enrique Mesa, in San Diego, as you can tell from my background, that is my office background. Um, but the question has to do no, no, with no. the type no, of signage. Enrique, that is your office, it's not the background. That is my office, exactly. I, I'm literally on the water right now. Um, but it has to do, of course, with, with the type of signage that we are exploring, um, You know, whether it's uh, the types of ID that are accepted. You know, down in San Diego, of course, matricula consular would be one, things like that. So that's one question is, signage overall, again, in terms of entering the branch. And the second one has to do still a language. And I'm curious what um, other um, credit unions, even maybe others that can share examples of, of resources available online. We talk about the importance of um, Spanish in San Diego being important to people that were hiring, but how do you measure that financial uh, capability from, from staff, right? So I'm curious, um, I think, Carlos, you mentioned training. I'm curious if there's some online resources, perhaps CUNA or whatnot, that are available where we can measure uh, financial knowledge, right? The financial terms that are important um, in Spanish. Um, as we know, they're important in English, but making sure that our staff and our colleagues are, um, you know, could be trained and or could access that training and or measurement. So I'll stop talking, um, but it's good to see a lot of familiar faces on this call. I will jump in. Um, I don't think CUNA has anything in Spanish um, that you can use as a resource. Maybe, maybe we can look into other other groups. Uh, Copera, perhaps. I'm not really sure. Pablo may be more familiar with Copera, and they may have something we can check on with them. But on the other hand, uh, the the financial education for our staff it's all in English, right? Um, resources for members. We do pull from different areas. I'll be very happy to get with the marketing group and, and, and share whatever we have uh, and where we pull that information. So I'll be happy to share, to share that. I may jump in. Um, I know uh, somebody mentioned the CPD online courses, you know, and, and those are through CUNA. Also, you might want to refer to those. Uh, one of the other ones that it's uh, pretty new, like uh, about two or three years ago, the Open Your Eyes campaign through CUNA. Uh, they have a, a lot of really good information in Spanish, science, signage that you can use. We use some of it in our lobbies, and we're going to be doing more with it in Spanish. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend is if you don't have a bilingual website, you know, look into going bilingual on the website. You know, that always helps a lot. 
uh, we haven't really tracked to see how many people are really uh, logging in into the Spanish version. But I tell you really what works for us is the uh, having the personnel that speak Spanish, having somebody that looks like them when they walk in, I think that helps a lot. But also we get very involved with the schools, with the Cinco de Mayo celebration, the any, anything that has, that is oriented towards the community that you serve. You know, if you can be out there, you know, open up, a, you know, a, put a little table out there and advertise some of your products. Even if you don't have the Spanish literature, have somebody that can tell, tell them in Spanish what they're looking for because they feel more comfortable. So really it's that communication that you establish with them and then sign us in your lobbies, your website, anything that you can do like that. I, I know, um, and Pablo, you might remember this in Carlos, uh, when we first started the, the network, we had, there was a, a, a glossary that we had, and I may, I'm gonna look for it. I think I may still have it available. And it was a, a glossary of terms in Spanish and it was all financial terms that you know we used to use. So something like that, you know, look for something, even online, you might be able to find it. But if I find it, I, I can share, you know, you just email me or I'll, I'll send it to inclusive and Pablo, maybe you can, um, you know, if, if anybody wants it, but I, I'll look for it. I may still have it. I have a lot of stuff on my, on my in basket there. Now, I can think, I just say that? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go no, ahead no. Pablo. no, Ruby, please. I just wanted to add that I think Maria and Carlos bring up really good points about the information out there. Here at GECU, we have our own um, information that we hire a translator and we've translated all of our presentations. But one of the things that that I've noticed and maybe some of you may struggle with is that when we hire employees that are bilingual, many of them have not experienced life on their own. And so they may not have those types of conversations, let's say with their parents or with their family. So the financial terms are not as common as their everyday conversations. And so some of the things that I'm very big on is going through those presentations with them and conversing in Spanish and making sure that they feel comfortable to talk about a mortgage loan and talk about credit. And so that they are able to have those conversations. A lot of times they're bilingual, but when it comes to the financial terms, they're not bilingual. And I think it's very important that we do train them with those terms. And so Maria brings up a good point about the glossary. Uh, we actually do, did use that at GECU for a long time because a lot of times they didn't know how to say mortgage, right, hipoteca. And so they didn't know how to say that. So I think that making sure that we have those conversations internally so that they can practice. Once they're able to practice with the members, they're gonna get very comfortable with, with those conversations. Yeah, and I, I want to say a couple of things. One is that um, there's one piece that is kind of, you know, how do we make sure that our staff, you know, really understands the terminology. The second piece is how do we educate members or potential members. So C, uh, CFPB has a lot of resources in Spanish. You know, it's it's something that everyone should be, you know, checking and, and pointing consumers to it. Um, SBA also has, you know, really increased their um, resources in Spanish. The FDIC, believe it or not, they have a lot of materials in Spanish, I wish NCUA up their game a little bit more there because, you know, these are resources that can be used by any financial institution anyways. Um, but the other part of this is to, you know, work with, um, community-based organizations with partners. And, and when I mentioned at the beginning, the Mexican consulate, you know, many of you work with um, uh, uh, nonprofits in the community. I think that that's, you know, another way to, you know, market and kind of uh, educate um, consumers about what we do. Um, remember that, that uh, for most consumers, you know, they don't, Tell the difference between banks and credit unions, you know, so we may come across, you know, almost as the same, you know, we see the difference, you know, so I think that is important to kind of, um, you know, gain their, their trust and that can only be done through partnerships. Thank you, Pablo. And now um, Carmen has her hand up. Go ahead, Carmen. Carmen is actually a member of our advisory committee and represents the Northwest Credit Union Association. Hola, Carmen. Gracias por acompañarnos. 
Hola, thank you, Renee. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much for the great information. I So my question actually is really along the lines of what we were just talking about, but I was just curious, you know, I heard several of the panelists mention the importance of bilingual staff, and I was, it made me wonder, is there value in folks that didn't grow up speaking Spanish, like taking those courses and going back to school, or is that like, yeah, but they're, it's just really not going to get them to where they need to go. Like you really do need to hire someone that grew up speaking Spanish. Like just curious. I mean, I, I imagine both would be great, but just curious if anyone has perspective on kind of where would be best for the credit unit to put their resources. Um, and then I also wanted to throw out that we should have a networking group for bilingual staff so that they can talk with each other about some of the issues that they're hearing. Um, that could be really valuable as part of the Juntos Avanzamos network. If I can answer that, uh, Carmen, I know uh, some uh, organizations, some credit unions are going to have difficulty finding somebody that's bilingual. Definitely. I think, you know, those of us in the border were privileged because that's all we have around here. But I think those of you that are not, uh, you're going to have to hire somebody, maybe even provide them with courses where they can go or hire somebody to come in internally. I know a few years back, I hired uh, one of the professors from the college here and he came in and he did some Spanish classes to some of my employees that, you know, they were they, they didn't speak Spanish. So maybe there, there could be an investment that y'all could do. I know um, another thing that we do, and I, I, I know Gina is on the call here too. Uh, Gina runs our uh, education program and our VITA program in financial education. But one of the things that she does is uh, she also motivates people by playing Loteria. So Mexican Loteria, you know, he she does workshops and in order to bring them in, she, you know, makes have them play in Loteria. And, and I know even at the people that attend, they may not understand the words in the Loteria, but maybe you can develop a Loteria that has things of the, of the credit union, like a share account, you know. Esta es una cuenta de ahorros or something like that. Develop a loteria that you can make it fun with them. And, and I know Gina is very creative, you know, in attracting uh, members and non-members, so that prospective members. So that might be another thing that you could do, even with your staff. Maria, I wonder if we can do a loteria with drinks. <laughs> Definitely. We're doing some Argentinian wine. <laughs> oh, dele con eso. No, Chilean wine. Come on, Carlitos. <laughs> Anyway, um, Carmen, I can just uh, wait in here, but before I jump, uh, Enrique, there's some great materials on Fannie Mae. Look for Fannie right. Mae. They have, we do have some of those booklets still. Uh, I'll see if I find them. Um, about, it's about all about mortgages and your financial education in English and Spanish, and I found those to be very good. Carmen, I, I think your questions are very valid and, uh, and re relevant since it's not only the language, I think it's more of the culture. Sometimes we find people who speak Spanish, but they don't really relate to the community. They just speak, but, and then you want people who can relate to them, so people who can uh, understand. So maybe you may have a gringo somewhere uh, who is really, who relates very well with the, with the community and with members, but they, they may not speak English, Spanish that well. Um, so I'd rather have that person and train them than have someone who speaks Spanish, but they may not relate to the membership or to the issues, to the community and to the culture. So. The culture matching is, to me, is more important. Excellent, thank you, uh, Carlos. And we have, okay, so we have a lot of people waiting to speak. Um, Enrique, perdóname, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to you. I think that um, Alvaro, you had your hand up before Edith. Adelante, Alvaro, saludos. Bienvenido. Hi, everybody, hola, que tal? Um, I, I, we actually have been working with Copera for a very long time, and they do offer the translation services and a whole library of, um, of uh, just documents that you can use as cheat sheets that translate all the regular terms. Um, we're very fortunate. Um, I, I'm, based, I'm from a central credit union. We're based out of Bettendorf, Iowa, of all places, and we manage to have about 20% of our employees uh, who are bilingual. Uh, but it's been a long progress. Uh, I mean, we've been working at it. Uh, a lot of uh, referral systems where if you refer somebody after a year, you give 500 bucks. Uh, so that's been very successful. Um, so um, 
a, a, a thing that really stuck out was individuals who might say, I know some Spanish because we had, we, we would pay an extra dollar. Well, they would ask me at one point, HR would ask me to talk to them on the phone as we were hiring them and evaluate the Spanish, which I did for a while, but I always maintained, well, we've got to have a different system because one, initially I was very picky. I wanted people who knew diff the difference between usted and had a very professional uh, uh, Spanish. And then I realized, well, that's going to be really hard. So then I got more lenient and just scared about can they communicate effectively, even if it's in Spanglish? And that's really what it boiled down to. Uh, but it really was not a, a set standard. So um, after years of doing this, um, HR finally found a company that has a test. Uh, their name is Alta Translation Services. I don't know if anybody's ever used them or heard of them, but I guess they work in different sectors. And in the banking world, they do a lot of uh, work with Wells Fargo. So they have a test specifically designed for the financial services. And, um, and the really neat thing, I took it just to see where I was at. The neat thing is that it grades you from one to 12. And they tell you about nine is where you want somebody to be where they're independent and they don't have to ask for help uh, from another staff member and pull them. And they, they know their stuff because um, I'm proud to say I came at an 11. But it's also a little bit embarrassing because I'm a native Spanish speaker from Mexico. So, uh, so the test was not easy. Um, it was a verbal uh, test. They they check how the the I guess the level of words that you use, the the education level, uh, so on and so forth. But it it is very accurate. So um, I, I can put it on the chat. Uh, that that's been a really good tool uh, that helped HR it helped with that uh, pinch point for us. Um, so Coopera has a lot of resources. Alta is another option when hiring. And if you're paying a little bit of extra for those who are bilingual. Um, Alvaro, great suggestions. You know, I'm, I mean, the, the fact that they, they work with Wells Fargo doesn't give me a lot of confidence, <laughs> but, but I'm sure that they're a great company. Uh, I think that this is the type of resources though that we need to start collecting for the benefit of the network. Um, to Carmen's um, question or suggestion about, you know, organizing some sort of, you know, networking group for bilingual people. I think that that's something that NALCAP, the National Association of Latino Canadians and Professionals is better suited to host. We are happy to support that and, Carmen, I love the idea. Uh, we are trying to organize, um, um, what, is, what is the word? Uh, to organize um, groups that have a specific interest, you know, around say clean energy or, or uh, CDFI. But on, in this space, I think that this is something that we need to formalize. Uh, NALCAP now has uh, an executive director. So we'll definitely follow up with NALCAP and come up, come back to you guys with some some solutions, hopefully soon. In some of the uh, some of the networking receptions that we have had uh, that are bilingual, we've had a lot of uh, motivational uh, people log in because they they want to use their language. They they want to and and it's funny because uh, Griselda just put that in in Texas we use Tex Mex, and and it's true and. And I was kind of joking around because we've been on the news lately with uh, all the people from Haiti that, you know, have been coming in through through Del Rio. And so, but, you know, they speak Spanish. So I was telling Pablo, I said, now it's not going to be Tex-Mex. It's not going to be Sp Spanglish. It's going to be, hey, Spanish, you know, for Haiti or something like that. So, uh, but these people, think about it. You know, we're getting these people that are coming in you know, because they're asking for asylum, but they're coming in through the Latin American countries. They're coming in through Mexico and, and they've been there for years. This didn't happen yesterday that they came in through there. So they come in speaking Spanish and they cannot communicate in English, but they can communicate in Spanish. So that's another avenue that we as credit unions, we need to be ready for because this is not gonna stop right now. So just for, for thought, Definitely. Edith, you wanted to add something? 
Um, yeah, so I wanted to just uh, quickly add, um, you know, the, um, as Pablo mentioned, the relationship building within your community, I think is so important. Um, Ventura County is uh, very saturated with Hispanics and um, a part of that Hispanic community is from Oaxaca and they speak yeah. an indigenous language. So we have partnered with um, MICOP, which is the Mixteco Indigena Community Organization, organizing project, excuse me. Oh my God, I butchered that. Um, and, you know, we have a representative from their organization come into our facility and translate and do these type of translations. Cause you know, as a Spanish speaker, as a Mexicana Spanish speaker, you know, learning this other language, especially, you know, Mixteco or an indigenous language, it might be a little bit more difficult and it might not be something that is taught. Um, and therefore creating these relationships with our community partners is huge. And now we're able to help a different uh, demographic within our own community to, to help with the banking and help those underserved. So creating those relationships when it's not feasible to hire somebody that speaks the language, or, you know, if you're not able to learn the language yourself, it's, it's great. It's worked for us. <laughs> and that's true. Actually, last time we, we had a Unto San Samos round table in, it was in California. It was, we were actually hosted. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we also, hosted. <laughs> right. And so, it, it, you know, we had the opportunity to get to know more about, you know, your relationship with the Mixteco community. And it was, it's really impressive what you're doing. So thank you. Enrique. At last, go ahead, back to you. It, it was just gonna be an, an addition. Thank you, Rene. Um, and some of you may be familiar with um, the Latinos in Finance program. It's managed by Unidos US, formerly National Council for La Raza. And on the local level, we have partnered with an organization called MAC. And MAC is the, in essence, sort of the program facilitator, educator of Unidos, um, I'm sorry, of Latinos in Finance. But the whole intention of Latinos in Finance is to, in essence, reach out to the Latino community and introduce the concept of the idea of a career in the finance sector. And so it's not just us, Mission Fed, as a credit union that have been a part of their sessions. It's about eight weeks of training. It's us. Um, I believe it's two other credit unions and the bank that's a part of it as well. So um, I could put in the chat the, the email of the national program manager of, of the Latinos in Finance because I'm sure they would probably want to hear from other Caribbeans that might be interested and or could reach out to community partners that would run the program. But in essence of recruitment, um, just getting the word out and introducing the whole idea again of a career in finance to Latinos, this program has been really good for us. Thank you so much for sharing, Enrique. Pablo, you're going to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Enrique, the, uh, Unidos USA is, is being... Um, an organization that both NALCAP and Inclusive have been, you know, at times um, connecting with. I would love to learn more about that program. I know you've spoken a lot about it um, because I'm thinking that that's the type of, you know, kind of national platform that we could make available to both the, the Juntos Avanzamos Network, but also to NALCAP members. So let's follow up offline and see how we can, you know, understand more how that works and if we can, you know, provide a kind of a national solution for our members and partners. Excellent, gracias Pablo. So we are about say seven minutes um, from the cut of time for our networking session. Any additional- No, no, you have to say seven minutes from tequila time. Tequila time should have been now, but you know, unfortunately, it seems that you know the mail didn't get there. Enrique, go ahead. I talk enough. I need to lower my hand, actually. Thank you, Rene. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since you're very eager. Rene, right. if I can mention something else, um, you know, I really I, I want to challenge mm -hmm. each of you. Um, as we as NALCA, we are gonna be putting a lot of training together in networking receptions and webinars and you know please in you know attend but also invite others because i think little by little as we progress into making nalcup a national bigger association we want everybody's support uh, the other thing is that we have a networking reception that we're working on for the governmental affairs conference in washington dc 
and you'll be hearing more about that. Uh, also, I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pablo, but I understand that uh, there's a possibility that next year that con this conference may be an in-person conference in Puerto Rico. And uh, if that's the case or wherever it's at, you know, we're hoping that we can have, yeah, we're hoping that we can have a, a networking reception also so that we can all join in. And maybe at that time we can have the tequila or if we're in Puerto Rico, we may have to have rum, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I think it's, it's supporting each other and learning from each other because just like you're learning from those of us that are in the panel, I, I learned something from y'all today. So, you know, we all learn from each other and that's why this networking receptions, I love them because we get to hear from each other. You know, it's always really good. Yeah, and Maria, you know, alcohol has a, lang a universal language. So you call it tequila or margarita or mojito, <laughs> whatever it is, we'll have it. So yes, the conference is gonna be in Puerto Rico the first week of May, May 2nd to 4th. We're, we'll make sure to send you the information. Uh, we're pretty confident that we're gonna be able to do it. Puerto Rico so far has one of the highest rates of vaccination in the country. So we feel like it's going to be possible. Uh, also, I wanna remind everyone that on September 30th, we have NALCAP um, is organizing um, a webinar with regulators. Uh, we'll have uh, for the one, for people who were on the conference earlier, we're gonna have Noel Pollo from the US Treasury Department. We're gonna have someone from NCUA, Miguel Polanco, who's the new um, director of the Office of Minority uh, and Women, something, I forget the whole title. And then we'll have someone from the FDIC. So a uh, great you know, lineup of speakers. Um, so you know, participate and, and share the work because it's important to have regulators to really understand uh, the, the needs of, of, of the Latino community. Thank you, Pablo. Additional comments, thoughts? Gloria, Ruben, Heidi, Ari, Mary, Robin, Griselda, Espy, any additional comments, anything you'd like to add? All right, then. Renee, I, um, send, the, I send the registration link for the uh, webinar that's coming up for NALCAP so that y'all can put it on, on your calendars and join us. There's no cost and pass it along to others so others can join us too. Excellent. Thank you. Any additional comments from the panelists before I start the process of closing the networking session? So what about the stand-up comedy now? Let's do something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay, Ruben, you start. <laughs> I think I think Ruben is ready. <laughs> Come on, Ruben. I'm ready to work. Oh uh, yeah, right. Ooh, that's <laughs> serious. Serious. Um, I'll let the comedy to the professionals. Okay, Calditos, I guess that's Calitos. for you. <laughs> I'm gonna yield that to Pablo. Anyway, I just I just posted a link to a glossary of terms that I found uh, the CFPB in Spanish, by the way. Thank you. Thank you and, so and much. And Diana, Diana was asking about the conference. I think you said May second through the fourth. Yes. It's the yeah. And then the networking reception at, at governmental the first conference is going to be March the first. So just kind of put those in your. In your calendar. We'll send more. We're, we'll we'll send a save the date. It's for gonna everybody. be fun. Yes. All right. Excellent. So before we close, I also wanted to invite you to our Juntos Avanzamos closing of Hispanic Heritage Month webinar. It's called Beyond IT Lending. We're gonna have um, Richard Romero, our board chair from Seattle Credit Union, also. Rosa Franco from Neighborhood Trust Credit Union and John Wilkening from Notre Dame FCU. And we're gonna be talking about um, item lending as a cog and elaborate uh, system of financial inclusion on just one very important part, but not the whole of it. And we're also going to be talking about um, an issue we haven't talked about before, which is item pricing. So you're all invited, it's in October 14. Um, we will be circulating additional invitations that you can go in and 
register. Now, on behalf of the of Inclusive and the Juntos Avanzamos Network, I want to thank you all for joining us for this networking session. We are proud to have leaders such as yourself advocating for the financial inclusion of the Hisp of Hispanic communities throughout the United States. It is always a pleasure for me to uh, to share in conversation with you. I come out learning much more than what I knew before. So thank you so much. Now, to follow the script, thank you. Tomorrow at 9.15 a.m., please sign on to view a thoughtful, thoughtful conversation between our CEO, Kathy Mann, and Robert Smith, the founder and CEO and chairman of Vista Equity Partners. The second day of the Inclusive Conference will kick off at 10 a.m. You won't want to miss it. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great afternoon. Now you're free to open up your bottle of wine, rum, tequila, you know, from whatever culture you're from, whatever you drink, go ahead and have it. Thank you so much and have a great, great evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>